Okay, for this recipe, brine turkey, we're gonna thrivalize this a bit. Why brine is the question. So let's talk about it. What does brining do? Salt and sugar attacking this for up to eight to 12, even a little bit longer as you desire. What's gonna happen is, is this is gonna break down, soften, moisten, and flavor the actual turkey. So that when you roast it, you cut into this baby and boom, it's going to be so juicy and so delicious. Brining has been around for, for centuries. Brining is, is, is the way to cure and have things last long periods of time. I've taken just one of my old buckets, um, it's a Shelf Reliance bucket, and this is the way I, I'll do it. Now this bucket's very large because we like, we like to go big here. So this is a six gallon bucket. For this small bird, you could, you could get by with maybe half the size. Um, you don't wanna overdo anything. Remember, everything you put into the brine costs you money. Brining is very, very easy, very simple. Basically, you're going to take all of your liquids, add it right in. So I'm gonna take about 14, about a gallon of water. Put in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my cranberry juice, my orchard apple drink mix, and that's basically going to give it some good acidity, some good flavoring. It's going to give it a little bit of sweetness as well. We're going to go ahead and add sugar, and you think that's a lot of sugar, but you really, it's a brine. So you really need quite a bit of sugar in order for that to really penetrate into the meat. And then that salt thrive salt. Then we're gonna take some of our herbs and aromatics. This is our salad blend. It has little, little uh, diced onion, it has parsley, it has chives. It's a great little blend. So I put in the, the uh, salad blend, I just put in parsley, and I just put in our Italian blend. All herbs that we sell, freeze-dried herbs, in our seasoning one. Now we have uh, our new onion. If you can see these babies, aren't they just delicious? Big, gourmet, so of course we have our small chopped onions, and now we have more of our, our gourmet uh, sliced onions. I'm gonna go ahead and put some onion in there as well. We're gonna drop the orange zest in there, and the zest of orange, you can put the oranges right in too, if you don't have any other use for them. You know, I'll, I'll zest the oranges, then if you peel them, give them to the kids, whatever you want, but I'll put the orange zest right in there, and then the garlic, goes right in there. Um, also, after you use the pills and things, the pills can go in there, it's, it's, it's fine. It's just remember the aromatics. Now, when you're picking a turkey, this is only about a, a, a nine to 10 pound turkey. It's not a very big turkey. Um, but when you're picking your turkey, you know, you wanna try to pick turkeys from name brands that really make sense. I really like Norvest. Um, they, they've been around a long time and I'm not trying to promote them, but you wanna make sure you get a turkey that, that you trust and that you've used before and you know is gonna be really good. Um, the other thing, you wanna make sure you pull the giblet bag. There's a giblet bag behind the cavity here. You're gonna lift this up, pull the giblet bag out, and then in the actual cavity, you're going to pull out the neck and um, any other little uh, extremities that are in there so that you can use those for your gravy. Okay, now I have everything in here. You're gonna wanna give this a good stir. Make sure that you mix the sugar and the salt well enough that it dilutes and transforms into the liquid itself. If you don't do that, it's just gonna settle at the bottom and basically you're losing, you're losing the power to brine. Okay. Now, brine turkey literally was going to change the texture or nature of the protein, the meat. It's going to soften it. It's going to make it a little bit more dense. You, you, fresh bit bacon compared to cured bacon, huge difference. Cured bacon, it's just a little more solid. It's, it's a little more processed. And that's what we're going to do to this turkey by putting it in this brine. It holds the juices better. It's, it's just packed full of juice when it cooks. And I've had a lot of questions on, well, if you brine a turkey, can you still fry a turkey? 
Absolutely. The main thing you want to worry about is safety. You can't take this turkey right out of the brine, put it right into the deep fryer because it has so much liquid on it. You need to make sure you drain it, turn the cavity up so all the water comes out, pat this thing dry, then put more seasoning on it, then put it in the deep fryer. Just make sure that the brine turkey is dry, then deep fry it. To be honest, I wouldn't deep fry a turkey that I haven't brined. To be honest, I wouldn't cook a turkey that I haven't brined. So, brine your turkey. It's a simple way to make Thanksgiving turkey perfect. Now, I've stirred it up. I've put everything in there, okay? And what I'll do is it kind of pops up, almost floats, but you can see I've got just the right amount of turkey in there for the liquid. I don't have this much liquid with this much turkey. It's just the right amount. You don't want any more liquid than you have to have. Because one, you're wasting money, you're just throwing food in there, food in there that, that, that you may not use again. So you wanna just barely cover it. But the turkey is kinda of popping out. So what I'll do is I'll just get a bowl or a pan and I'll stick that, stick that right in there like that to weigh that turkey down so that it's sitting in the liquid completely. I'll take my gamma lid that we sell. If you don't have buckets like this, you've gotta get them. Booyah, that easy. This now goes in the fridge. Now, how's this gonna fit in my fridge? Guess what? 99% of the time your, 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 your shelves in your fridge are going to adjust. This will fit in your fridge. It just takes about five minutes to adjust your fridge. And while you're doing it, might be a good idea to clean it out. But anyways, that's the brine turkey. See you in eight hours. Okay, I have waited eight hours for this turkey. I, my mouth is already starting to water because I know the brine, the hot tub, the bath of love, thrive love has been working and massaging this turkey so well. So take your bowl out. That was your weight to weight that turkey down so it's down in the brine. And you can see after eight hours, it just looks soaked, okay? So you wanna take this now to the sink and you're literally just gonna drain this turkey out. You can see a lot of water in that cavity. Okay. Once you get that drained out, you're pretty much ready to go. Now, what do you do with the brine? That's the question. Well, you can reuse it for other things. There's no doubt about that. You can reuse it. But what I'll do is I'll capture the, the herbs and the onions. Why not strain that off? If you're not going to use the brine, why not strain off those herbs, those onions, all that good thrive flavor, because there's still going to be a little life left in those. So what I'll do is I'll take that mixture of our freeze-dried onions and herbs, and I'll actually put that right into the cavity of the bird. Put any of the remains right on there as well, okay? Now that you've got the, the turkey, and this is just going to be an oven roasted one, so it's not, it's not a big deal to get it completely dry. To be honest with you, I, I'll, 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 I'm fine with just a little bit of, of uh, liquid still there. You can see I've got a little bit on the bottom. That's going to actually help steam and permeate that turkey as it roasts. Now I'm not going to cover this turkey pretty much most of the time. I'm going to cook it about 275, 300 degrees uncovered so that this baby caramelizes. To help the bird caramelize, I'm actually going to season the outside because we really haven't seasoned the bird, but I'm going to take some of our Thrive uh, Chef's Choice All-Purpose Blend seasoning and I'm going to put that all over this bird. Okay, I'm going to put the seasoning on first, then I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the bird as well. What is the oil going to do? Well, the oil is going to help caramelize this baby and get that skin nice and crispy in the roasting process. You're pretty much ready to go. You could tie some string on these wings, suck those in, truss those wings together so that they cook evenly, or you can just kind of tuck those wings underneath the leg. That's usually what I'll do is I'll just tuck those babies right underneath this leg like that. Then they're gonna stay in and not burn on the ends. Okay, so your turkey's now ready to go. You've got a nice aromatic filling in the middle. Those herbs and onions are gonna get hot and start cooking and release their aromatics into the meat themselves. We've got seasoning on there. We've got oil on there for browning. 
We've got an oven rack so that the roasting method can happen all over the thing. We've got a semi-deep pan to collect the juices to add back into our gravy. Turkey time right here, Thrive Life Kitchen. Love it. Going in the oven, 300 degrees. So brining the turkey, then roasting the turkey, and then eating the turkey. One, two, three. Three steps to paradise. But look at this turkey. And of course, our little turkey timer popped out, meaning it was cooked. All right, but really, there's a couple little tricks. You wanna make sure you only cook the turkey to about 165, 160 degrees, and you wanna make sure you take the temperature down where it's the thickest or the most aggressive uh, part of the turkey so that you can get the most accurate reading. And then the juices are gonna come clear uh, from the turkey. When the juices are clear, you know that it's pretty much cooked. Overcooking the turkey is going to then, of course, dry the turkey out. So remember, you only need to hit about 160 to 165 degrees. Then the, the, the thing you gotta remember too, let the turkey rest. Allow the turkey at least 20 to 30 minutes to rest and just kind of collect itself. And what happens is, is all those juices, they're, they're being forced out from the heat. Now when that rest, those juices wanna come back together and come back into the meat. And so let that baby rest. But as you can see, Brining turkey, Thrive Style, in our kitchen, is easy, simple, and just wonderful. Enjoy your nice Thrive turkey. <laughs>